Welcome to this Zentangle Quickie. My name is Heather Hartwick Gladden. I'm a certified Zentangle teacher. And today we're going to take a look at the tangle Florabella from CZT Nancy Domnauer. Oh my goodness, this is so much fun. <laughs> um, so today, the timing of this recording, it's Thursday, which means it's Tangle Time Day. And oh my gosh, did we ever have so much fun with this on our, our sessions. Oh, I'll, I'll show you the results afterwards. Oh my goodness. All right. So totally fun tangle. All right. If you've done the Tangle Flux, that gives you a nice uh, kind of head start with this one. Because we're going to do, it's and it's Rick's Flux. Uh, that's the shape we're going to do. And if you've not, it's okay. All right, we're going to start. Oh, let's see. You know what? I, I did find it a lot nicer. Let's do four corners and a border. All right. I just needed some place to start. And that helps. All right. And if you don't know about the, four, the corner dots and border, take a, take, do yourself a, a Zentangle favor. <laughs> And uh, find a CZT. I do teach these classes as well. Um, that teaches some sort of a, a class where they go over the eight steps that are Zentangle. I call mine Zentangle Essentials. I do them every time there's a fifth Tuesday. I think the next one is April 30th. Uh, mine are, are $15. Uh, you can follow me. Uh, links are in the description uh, You know to follow me to find classes. Um, but that will explain oh, what is that I don't understand we explain all of that and more all right so this one starts off with okay here is the what, we, what I always call the flux shape or you could call it a tethered orb or a teardrop or you know whatever uh, fits for you and let me I'm gonna aim it towards the center so we kind of come out and then back in so like tethered here or a speech bubble <laughs> whatever works. Okay. So one, then we're going to aura it. And that's basically an outline. So we kind of follow the contour. Uh, but I like Nancy called this a uh, uh, tethered aura. So we're going to tether it right here at this point where we started and going on the inside. And then you decide the distance you want to keep from the outside shape up to you. And I am also going to dare say, if you ended up drawing it small and you're like, oh, but I don't want to go on the inside. You could go on the outside because see, like, if I, if I, if I could have drawn that line on the outside as well. So that's a kind of a course corrector for you. All right. Next, we're going to do a lot of auraing and then a lot of halabowing. Halabow is how to draw behind something. So if you watch, you'll see, I'm not going to, we're not crossing any lines. So I'm going to do another one and I'm picking up my pen here, traveling it across as if I'm drawing and then just continuing on its way. It's a good practice to do this in one thought process versus, oh, I'll do this and then, oh, then maybe I'll come around this way. I mean, you can, but it just, it seems to have a nice flow and then it does, it gives you more of a chance of it looking like somehow it was drawn behind. Oh, you erased something, you know, no, we didn't. <laughs> And then same thing, we're going to aura. And then here you, you kind of have to imagine, okay, well, where would that come out if I was tethering it right here or it would be about here. And so because of all of the, the aura ing and probably, well, the combination of the aura ing and the halabow ing, it takes a little bit more concentration maybe than most tangles. But with that, you can easily just lose yourself in the tangle and, um, you know, and just be absorbed by it. And that's kind of the point of Zentangle. Let's see, I'm going to do another one here. And then this, you just put them wherever you want. It's completely up to you. But it's just nice to have tangles like this where you, you can just lose yourself in them. And you just keep going. You're like, well, where do I want to go next? I don't know. Well, maybe I'll start another one here. Okay, I will. Yeah, and you might find yourself talking to yourself like that. <laughs> if you, it, you're not crazy. I need to make t-shirts that says, I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm just doing Zentangle. <laughs> you know, and then however you want to overlap them, 
is up to you. And this is where I usually run into the decision problems. Because uh, it's like, well, I don't know. I do feel like I want to do another one in here just because. All right. So if I was doing one in here, we'll start it here. And then, oh, look it. I'm going to go underneath my border. And it would end up there. You don't have to. Because the string line is just a suggestion, but I find it fun. <laughs> but then I'm kind of weird, too. <laughs> All right. Oh, just because... Oh, let's see. Which way do I... I'm going to do one. Let's do one coming from up here. Come in the other direction. Oh, yeah. Let's do this. Oh, let's see. Oh, a little bit there. That one's going to go way behind. I think, yeah. Well, it is, obviously. There we go. That can go a little off. Oh, and since I did that one, one more. Apparently, I'm enjoying going off of the tile. There we go. And that's it. You just do it however you wish to do it. And that's it. It's a lot of fun. Now, um, shading ideas. So, yeah. So what you're left with now is, oh, shading and decorating. It's up to you however you want to decorate. I did, you know what, I'm going to try this on here. I didn't do this on our sessions earlier. I did like on... Uh, some of Nancy's samples, she did these larger orbs. Usually with the Tangle Flux, we will um, fill in with orbs around it and stuff. But I really liked that she had... I'm just going to start down here. Oh, and I don't know that I have enough. Oh, there's enough room I could do. I could use my graphic one if I can find it. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. And I thought it really, really looked n rather neat having a lot of, you know, the dark space. Well, I could have just drawn the orbs with that, but that's all right. And then just like a few orbs and larger orbs. It just, I don't know, it was just something, something different and neat. Now for shading, lots of extra fun because you get to decide, and I'm going to be really careful right here. And flip back to this, getting those little tight spaces. I'm just going to do a little bit of this right up into here, and then I'll leave the rest for after. But I just want to show that because, like, what neat contrast. I mean, usually when we do it, and, and oh, my one sample, I did it, uh, the orbs more of what I would call the traditional way of uh, filling in with, with flux. But this is Florabella. It's not flux. I keep moving that off. So sorry. All right. I'm going to leave it like that for now. So your decisions are, well, hmm. Who, who gets the shading? <laughs> um, it could be, it could be the back ones. Because so maybe you want to, and I'm just going to fill in. We'll do the back ones on these ones, and I then I then I could totally change my mind in in a second flat. You just never know. Wrong color tortillon. Uh, there we go. And just filling in. My plan was to leave those. Oh no, I have another idea though with those. But then also, and this was fun, just, you know, because you can, you can decorate the insides, you can decorate the outsides. I kind of liked, it was one thing that, uh, actually mom started this and what, on one of her tiles and I thought it was a really neat idea and all of the other ideas that we had on our sessions just to do some perfing on the inside like that. Maybe I'll do all of them. I didn't do all of them on my other, but let's do that. At least on this one. 
Because see, the thing too, and this is this is what I'm contemplating as I'm doing these, is hmm, I could come back. And if I filled all of them in, so if I even if I filled this section in, it's still going to look neat, and it gives a, a you know a real transparent look. And I think I shall do that. And since I started with this size, I would recommend <laughs> if I was to do this again. But I want to be consistent, so I'm sticking with it. Get a larger pen pen nib like the graphic one that I was using I can you just go and just push push the pen onto the paper this if I do that I get just that little dot um, it just makes for a nice consistent perfing all right but then sometimes consistency is overrated just kidding just kidding That's all we got is consistency. That's why, you know, it's, 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 you know, when you mess, when you feel like you have messed something up, you don't worry about it. You just do whatever you did and just do it consistently and you're all good. Okay, so let's do this. So we'll put, and I would start with these because that way those, those little pieces are going to be a little bit more um, darker because we'll be adding more graphite, you know, over top. Like that. That is neat. Okay, I totally like that. But all kinds of options. For, oops, and I broke what I said I was going to do. Do the behind ones first. So that way it's a little darker when I see another place I want to fill in. Oh, I might as well while I'm here. Really. You know, and just, like I said, lots of fun to be had with this. And it's an, it's one of those that is, is impressive looking, but it's not necessarily so hard to do. And if you're not good at auraing or hollow bowing, it also gives you lots of practice. <laughs> oh. Oh, and if I fill that in, I think I'll put some more orbs out there and fill that in. And then I also saw this one little place, I mean, because I like to do this wiggly border, and so I will keep that border there. There we go. All right, let's, well, I'll do orbs with the big pen. That'll be good. Oh, so neat. All right. Well, if you have enjoyed this, and I hope you have, uh, would love it if you click on the like button. And as you're clicking, if, you, if you've not yet subscribed and like it enough to see more, we'd love to have, I'm just going to put another one right here. Uh, would love to have you be a subscriber to the channel. In just a second, I will show you some of our results. But in the description section, you will find links to the step outs. Now, I always do my own version and then link to the creator of the tangle. Um, and then below that, you'll find my link tree, which is you'll find ways to connect with me if you wish. Just like that. Okay, super cool. Oh, but we can't leave those orbs just be like that. Let's see, see, which way do I want? I like it that way. So one way to kind of dress up orbs, just put a little, little C shape of graphite in there. And you know what? You don't have to spread it out, but you can. And sometimes I will uh, make the C more into like, as if I was aura auraing, you know, inside, or you can just bring it out to the to one side like that. Just adds a little dimension to them. All right, <clears throat> and then of course, if you have like a white gel pen, you can add, you know, other, you know, highlights, accents, and stuff like that. So, um, mm, 
just super, super neat tangle. Super cool. All right. And <laughs> as I distract myself, wait one second, I, and I see something else that I need to, only because this is where I put my little string lines. So I want to, okay. And you know what I really should? Yeah, I don't normally like outline everything, but since I went underneath the, the, the border, I should do this only because of that. All right. There we go. Yes, now I like it more. Okay. <laughs> Where was I going with that? I don't know. I just, you know, sometimes you just get so enamored with them. Somehow I think that this makes it look a little spacey or steampunky. You know, if I had made maybe those orbs, if you're into steam, I don't know. I'm not really into steampunk, but something about it is a little, is intriguing. And maybe it's just the, oh, hey, you know, you could do that with this. I don't know. There's something about it that's just kind of neat. And that could, that could totally fit in there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, since I don't remember what I was going to say, let me show you my results from today. Oh my gosh. What fun. Let me pull this up. Maybe just a tad. There we go. What fun. Uh, so I did something similar, you know, where I did you know, my squiggly border and just, I had everything kind of coming in from, you know, from the four corners and, and then turning around wherever. And, uh, I had some fun with, uh, chalk, uh, chalk pencils, uh, by generals and, um, yeah, just super neat. But yeah, this, I put smaller orbs. So, I mean, it's just, it's just a different texture and it's neat. It's neat. And then on, uh, the PM session, so I do an AM and a PM session, same content. Uh, it's just, and a lot of people come to both because it's fun. And from the first one you get ideas. Cause we, at the end we do, a we let everybody, sh you know, share their webcam that can and wants to. And then I take a screenshot and we share and we look at that and, oh, it's just so neat. And so then you get other ideas, you know, and, and whether you get it from that or you just have other ideas as you were doing it and you want to come, you know, play some more, it's just a fun, fun time. And so this was my second one and I was using a prepped tile, which was done with alcohol inks. Actually, I was sopping up alcohol inks from something I was doing. It's like, well, why let it go to waste? And you just kind of, you know dab it up. And that's what this one was. So, and it just turned out really, really cool. My opinion. I, I, I was tickled with it. You know, it's fun when you don't have an idea necessarily, except for, Hey, I do know I'm going to do this tangle. <laughs> that's all I know. And okay, where to start? Oh, I don't know. Okay. You know, and it's just, I don't know. It's such a fun process. We have a good time. So if you would like to join us for this kind of fun. And as you see, there's no, um, it's, it, we're just tied to the tangle. It's, we, I show the tangle, explain it, you know, show some of the artwork from, you know, the, the creator of the tangle, uh, cause in their step out, you know, they'll usually do some samples and things like that. And then it's just, okay, let's see what we all want to do. And it's like I said, it's just a lot of fun. So if you want to come join us, please do. It's free free sessions. And I do these every Thursday, uh, 11 AM, seven and 7 PM, my time here in Michigan, that's Eastern time. Uh, and so in that link tree in the description section, you will find uh, some places that you can follow me for those, for those classes. And then you can on, uh, meetup.com and event, oh, and Facebook. Oh yeah. Those three places you can register and that way you'll get a reminder and it'll show in your time zone. So you don't have to calculate it. Um, I do have them listed on my website, but I don't at the moment have a way for you to register, except I do have links to the event bright and stuff like that. Um, uh, and Facebook. So if you happen to be on Facebook, you know, follow, uh, you know, click the link for my page and, uh, and follow me there for that. Uh, and if you are interested in, uh, just being a part of, uh, you know, uh, well, we call ourselves a tangle family. And we have a lot of fun and it's just, it's really, really amazing. 
Um, if you'd like to join us, we have a Tangle Addicts community group. And so there are four questions to answer once you click on that. And uh, that's it. That's all it takes to gain entry. So um, we'd love to have you join us. Let's see, what else is there that, I mean, that's really the, the biggest thing is that um, I mentioned the classes, you know, like I said, we just, we have a lot of fun. So with that, thank you so much for watching and I wish you happy tangling.